right, guys, welcome back. Now that we've basically covered the absolute basics of all the tools that you need to know about to make a solid mix to understand in order to really shape your music the way you want to. Now let's go ahead and get into a few other things which you might not use every every mix or you might not need to apply as much of every mix, but I feel like, for example, reverbs and things like that, a lot of that can already be determined while producing for the most part, unless you want to reapply reverb in, in mixing. Or, or using it for depth and all those different things. But I'm going to be talking about a bit about panning now and placement of elements in the mix. So last video you saw me basically monoing certain frequencies below a frequency, which was 200 hertz, and spreading out a bit of those sides. And, and uh, this essentially is just me working with the stereo field. I, I want to make sure that the lows are focused. That's what I like about lows, especially in DM. That's really important is having focused lows and making them sound tight. And then also having a high end, which is sweet and not harsh, but also wide. So you want to make sure that you're using different subtle techniques to ensure that everything has their own space. And this is what compression and mainly EQ are of course four but now i'm actually going to go a, a bit about say panning for creative effects so i'm going to be going and using an auto pan for the vocal stem in the drop i think that could be really interesting and this is something a bit more creative so let's go ahead and use a little preset maybe something like slow and steady to go off on and let's go ahead and listen to this vocal and or the vocal chop and also make sure that we're already automating things because we do only want this in the drop i think it would be too annoying to have that in the breaks or the builds so let's give that a quick listen to what that is doing <laughs> You can see you can go pretty crazy with all of this and you probably noticed already on your end that things were now moving from left to right with different speakers and panning essentially is just another way of placing elements in the mix. This is a very creative way of using panning to making certain elements more interesting and uh, kind of playing around with the listener's ear a bit as well and, and them basically being like, oh cool, things are moving around my head, everything seems so 3D right nothing's just sticking in one place and that's one of the the things too i wouldn't recommend to overuse this effect at all because then things can start becoming very weird and unfocused but just having one element just kind of moving around a bit more in a different way especially when you're using panning to place different things you can go from having a two-dimensional mix to a three-dimensional mix if that makes sense it'll add more depth and also more just interesting space in the whole mix. And sadly here, there aren't many things that I can just go and demonstrate for you panning wise because the elements are pretty simply laid out here. Usually you would say, for example, if you have a chord stack, say you have five different synths and you have one main synth and you have a few different supporting synths, it would be interesting to example, for example, panning two of those more to the right and the other two more to the left to really fill out different parts in the spectrum and also making sure that nothing's really sitting too much inside the middle right so you would for example if these if this was like a whole chord stack i'd have my main synth here that would be in the middle and i'd make that the loudest too but i'd also make sure that i have my two different supporting synths maybe one having you know just subtly having one maybe at like 30 to the left and then the other at 30 to the left as well, making sure that those are balanced in volume to, you know, make things a bit more interesting and giving everything else space as well. So not only do you use panning to create space in your tracks because you let things sit differently depending on where you want them to sit or how important they are, right? I usually find that things which are less important or not really a main feature, I try to pan them somewhere other than the middle to make space for the important features to 
or important elements to be in the middle. And on the other end, for example, I like using it creatively to create a bit more of an interesting contrast contrast within the mix. So let's go ahead and listen a bit more to this vocal stem and see how we can incorporate this effect into the rest of the mix. So we're going to taper this back just a bit more, but I feel like this is the speed that I want here. I don't want it to be too fast. I just want it to be, I might even make it a bit slower, but let's just go ahead and play this in context. And I think that I'm also going to be making this vocal stem a bit louder as well again. Just because after the processing I did, I wanted to stand out a bit more. And this will also make it a lot easier for you guys to hear what exactly this is doing. So let's give that another listen. <laughs> So instead of boringly just sitting in the middle, this is just very subtly kind of helping spread things out. And you don't want this to be too rash, of course. You don't want this to be too crazy, because then that can, again, you know, be a bit too extreme. But if you very subtly just kind of add that in, and this also give, helps you giving certain parts and elements space again. So let's go ahead and listen to that in solo again, because I really want to get the speed right. And then we're just going to go ahead and place that in properly. All right, let's taper that back a bit, and let's also make this just a touch more louder to really cut through in the drop there. And then I think we're basically ready to go. We're basically got everything sounding the way we want it to. Let's go and check that out. <laughs> So you can tell that's kind of a very subtle effect, but it it is noticeable. And if I were to take it out, as I did earlier, you would definitely notice it. And a good way of getting really creative with this, again, if you do it subtly, is say putting things like this on reverbs or panning reverbs different ways in terms of vocals. So say, for example, you could pan a vocal, a background vocal or a guitar or something like that, something which isn't the main focus in context, more like, say, to the right, and then you can load up a very loud reverb on the return, and then if that reverb is only on that instrument for that return, you can go ahead and pan that to the left and create some more dimensions that way. So panning is definitely something I would recommend for you guys to pl more so to play around with, to really just pan things by will, but not forgetting that the elements which are important, the elements which need to be in the middle, stay in the middle, right? Because that's going to be the focus of your song. And then according downwards, basically seeing what works and what doesn't. So this is just a quick little interlude on terms of panning. And next video, we're going to go ahead and move on to different reverbs and other effects.